about 80 kilometers from the Uttar Pradesh capital Lucknow and we are at Bhitargaon in the Raibareli district. Agriculture is the mainstay here. On a cloudy day, Shailendra Bahadur Singh is harvesting the last pumpkin of the season. For the last five years, Singh has shifted from growing legumes to growing vegetables. A welcome change, he tells us. We have a lot of vegetables for our vegetables. And there is also a profit. Now, as it is a kadua, there are so many vegetables, and there are so many vegetables, and there are so many vegetables, and there are so many vegetables. अभी इसमें हमको मिल गया होगा करीब करीब हाँ एक लाख रुपए तो पूरा हो ही गया। The crates he's filling are about to make their way to a cold storage unit close to his house. At five rupees a crate, it is a reasonable bargain, one that allows him to store his produce for a good day instead of worrying about them perishing. अरे उससे तो बहुत नुकसान होता है मैम। अब मान लो दस किलो सब्जी भी फेंकना है, तीस रुपए किलो भिंडी है, तीन सौ की गई, और यहाँ पांच रुपए में रख दिया, फिर एक दो दिन बाद जैसे ही मंडी या कहीं मेसना उठा के अपना फिर बेच दिया। शैलेंद्र's situation is not unique. One third of all food in India is either spoiled or wasted before consumption because we don't have adequate cold chains and storage facilities. In terms of numbers, India might have thousands of cold storages, but power outages and the high cost of diesel to run them on generators are a recurring problem. In Bhitargaon, where power cuts are frequent, Satish, the owner of the cold storage here, tells us why he relies on biomass. सहरों के तरह यहाँ ऐसा नहीं है कि कंटिन्यूम बत्ती आ रही है अगर गई भी तो दो चार पांच मिनट के लिए गई ऐसा नहीं है कभी ट्रांसफर जल ट्रांसफार्मर जल गया तो पता चला पांच दिन बत्ती नहीं आई हाँ ये इको फ्रेंडली है जैसे ये मिर्च हुई हमारी खेत में पैदा हो गई मिर्च टूट गई उसका पेड़ सूख गया वो वेस्टेज हुआ तो वो उस वेस्टेज से मैं इस कोल्ड स्टोरेज को चलाता हूँ जो खेत की वेस्ट जैसे ये पॉपकॉर्न मकई है इसका पेड़ मकई टूट गई पेड़ सूख गया उसको मैं कटवा लेता हूँ तो उसको मैं इसमें डाल के मैं इको फ्रेंडली करने के लिए मैं इसको उससे चलाता हूँ इसमें इलेक्ट्रिसिटी का खर्च ना के बराबर सतीश कोल स्टोरेज यूनिट इस बीइंग यूज्ड बाय अराउंड हंड्रेड फार्मर्स फ्रॉम द रीजन it also happens to be one amongst the 12 mature technologies in the country that is currently powered by dre or decentralized renewable energy Abhishek Jain from the Council of Energy, Environment and Water has studied closely how DRE-powered technologies go on to impact livelihoods and why the sector could prove to be a potential game-changer for rural communities. Typically, as you look at the rural communities, I mean, they need uh, energy not just for their uh, households, uh, for the daily course, but also need energy for a lot of the economic activities, uh, be it to power uh, their machinery to process the grain into flour, uh, their fruits into pulps and juices and squashes. So any kind of value addition and income generation activity that needs to happen needs some kind of energy. And if your grid supply is not reliable or if it is not there where you need the energy, often these decentralized renewable energy solutions become important to power that economic activity. Uh, and these 12 solutions that we are talking about from flour mills to oil expellers to uh, multi-purpose food processors, uh, they create this value addition right where the need is, right where the produce is. Decentralized renewable energy technologies are typically those that aren't connected to the central grid. They offer advantages like lower emissions, energy cost savings, job opportunities and increased resilience to power disruptions. Among the 12 established DRE livelihood technologies, solar-powered pumps, higher capacity and micro pumps, solar powered vertical fodder growing units and solar dryers have so far had the highest impact in terms of livelihood generation. The eco technology used in the cold storage units at Bhitargaon is called green gel. It uses ammonia as a refrigerant known to have global warming potential and ozone depletion potential amounting to zero. 
Today, it's benefiting 50,000 farmers across Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh. So using a green chill refrigeration technology, we do away with using a compressor and directly use biomass as a source of energy for compressing the refrigerant which is ammonia. By doing this, we are not only saving 40 tons of carbon emissions per annum by using a cooling green source of energy, but also saving the global warming by using a natural refrigerant. Experts tell us that the DRE sector is at the fore of India's aim to transition towards clean energy. Back in 2019, India had committed to electrifying every village linked to the national electricity grid. While that milestone might have been achieved, the supply remains unreliable. We often think about, oh, if you have the grid, why do you need a distributed renewable energy solution? Uh, but grid may be there in the household, it is not there in the field where you need the pumping facility to pump actually water to do the irrigation. It may be there as a single phase connection for basic uh, supply, but not as a three phase connection to run equipments and machinery which can actually generate livelihoods. There are a lot of these complementary roles that decentralized renewable can play uh, along with the grid. Uh, or if in some cases grid is probably available, let's say only 16 hours a day. And for the rest of the eight hours, either you will uh, rely on diesel or you can rely on this decentralized uh, solar energy and so on. India's target for 2030 is 500 gigawatts of renewable energy. At present, however, it receives 40% of its installed electricity capacity from non-fossil fuel sources, far from its target. Fulfilling India's ambitious renewable energy objectives will also require an increase in DRE projects. At present, DRE technologies have a potential to impact 37 million livelihoods in the country. But so far, its benefits have reached a little more than 5.5 lakh people. Sridhar Ishwaran of Samunnati Foundation that enables finance for agri-solutions tells us why one of the biggest roadblocks in the broad acceptance of DRE-driven livelihood solutions is its financing. 85% of the farmers are smallholder farmers in India with less than 2 hectares of land and it is getting fragmented. For them, even to do the sowing, getting finance is a big challenge because the banks and other institutions taking into account the risk, they are not able to fund it. The farmers are still dependent on informal sources. Coming to renewable energy, which is connected to climate, first, you have to really understand the profile of the farmer, what are his core activities. And accordingly, here, we, are, we deal with uh, technologies which cost anywhere between 30,000 can go up to it. So accordingly, you need to have the target segment. And one of the things which we also do is, if a 200,000 definitely is not something which we can give it to a farmer, but we try to give this particular setup to a SSG groups which can afford this and they process it. According to a climate policy initiative report, India will require annual investments worth 18 billion US dollars by 2024 a 10x increase from current levels to meet our sustainable energy targets. With inhibited financing, Abhishek underscores the need for awareness across the spectrum. If you go to a banker and say, okay, please give me a loan for a solar dryer, they'll be like, what is it? A banker has never seen a solar dryer. They do not know how to evaluate a credit application for a solar dryer. Like whether this is a viable loan for them to give or not, they have no idea. So that awareness gap needs to be built uh, bridged between customers, between financiers, between investors who are going to invest into these companies. So that, to me, is one of the biggest gaps. More than 1,000 kilometers from Rai Bareli, this is a remote tribal village called Kardapal. At this rural experience center in Orisha's Kionjhar district, Kuni Dehuri has trained more than 500 women in using these solar-powered silk reeling machines. Resham Sutra, the social enterprise behind it, has been using DRE technology to enable rural artisan communities to join the silk yarn creation economy, helping them gain financial independence. We set up something called a rural experience center which is basically a place where the women can come together and they can get a good amount of knowledge and training on how to uh, run the machines and how to run their business as well. And once the training is done, then we do financial linkages 
we help the women to form a small self help group or a producer company so that the group can get uh, access to all the different services and can uh, do buying and selling better a skilled artisan dehuri currently earns about 6 to 7000 rupees a month a 35% increment from earlier Additionally, these solar powered machines have also put an end to the ancient technique of tie reeling, a process where women had to draw filaments from the silk cocoons and twist them on their thighs, a painful and tedious method. So basically, uh, to get the same texture, we have a uh, a false twist device here that has a special pattern inside. So when the yarn passes through this, it's uh, collected into a pattern which mimics the one that women would make on their thigh with their hand Ration Sutra's silk yarn machines have found takers in more than 20000 artisans mostly rural women across 16 states It consumes only 15 watts power so that's why it's very easy to run it on solar power with a 40 watt solar panel we are able to run this machine for about 8 to 10 hours and at the same time charge a battery so when it can be run on a uh, during the dark hours or when there's rain or anything recognizing the challenges in the sector the state has launched schemes like pm kusum that provides a subsidy of up to 30% for renewable energy solutions even policy makers are focusing on the 50 billion dollar market of dairy powered livelihood technologies In fact, in February 2022, the Ministry of New Renewable Energy released a framework for promoting dairy livelihood applications. But experts believe there's room for more. So Indian government has actually become the first government anywhere in the world to have a dedicated policy framework on how to promote distributed renewable energy for livelihood and income generating activities. And we are hoping that soon on back of that framework there would also be a government scheme which can actually start allocating fiscal resources towards the promotion of these solutions uh, so what we are trying to do now is actually bring in policy convergence where various other livelihood schemes and programs of the government of india be it the national rural livelihood mission be it the agriculture infrastructure fund be it the uh, pradhan mantri scheme on formalizing micro food processing industries uh, various schemes are actually promoting technology adoption can we also leverage these schemes to enable adoption of distributed renewable energy alongside so why not if you are promoting a floor mill you promote a dri powered floor mill why not if you are promoting a coal storage you promote a renewable powered coal storage so by bringing that policy convergence uh, we can see a lot more deployments on the ground As for rural communities and those like Shalendra and Kuni who have embraced technology still recently unheard of this is hopefully just the beginning of the promise that DRE brings नहीं सब सबसे समस्या तो मैम ये है कि रखने के लिए सब्जी रखने के लिए कोई व्यवस्था नहीं थी अब एक कोल्ड स्टोर हुआ है नहीं तो सब्जी जैसे आज मार्केट ले गए मान लो थोड़ी बहुत है जो बच गई उसको फेंकना है और इससे ये हो जाता है कि यहाँ अपना रख दो जो बची अपना रख दो ने अपना बिक गई थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग इको इंडिया इफ यू लाइक द स्टोरी प्लीज गिव अस अम्स अप एंड सब्सक्राइब टू स्क्रोल डॉट इन ऑन यूट्यूब